POV. You are in an era where you are healing, working on yourself, and rearranging your daily actions to work towards a specific goal. Suddenly, a feeling comes over you, throwing you off from your goals. Loneliness. In a time where we are very individualistic, loneliness can happen at any point, no matter how introverted you are or independent you are. Sometimes it simply just stems from being reminded. And I think we are in an era where we need to remind ourselves of connection and how to feel connected. So stay tuned for this video where we talk all things about loneliness, connection, and just simply when you are starting to feel lonely, how to deal with those emotions effectively and how to understand the type of loneliness you are feeling. Hey everyone, my name is Aleja, you can call me Lay, and welcome back to my channel. The setup is a little different today because I thought it would be a fun idea to do a little bit more of a vlog style. Of course, I have my iPad with my notes because I don't want to miss a point, but I also have this for a little self-love a little solo date type vibe today and this is what I'm working on as I talk to the camera and I also have like snack bowl thing that I made as you can tell from the title of this video we're gonna be talking about basically how to not feel so alone that's something a lot of people struggle with <laughs> that is something a lot of people struggle with this time of year I remember when I was a teenager, I struggled, especially in February because of Valentine's Day. I think in adulthood, you still kind of feel that kind of loneliness if you don't have even a lot of friends either to do the Galentine's girl things. And I do think that we are in a time where we're in a loneliness epidemic. So the theme of the week is relationship with self. And for the podcast, I already talked about like how to stop being your worst enemy and i'm really excited for that but i knew for the video i wanted to do something along the lines of how to spend time with yourself which is why i did start the talk of loneliness a loneliness epidemic where so many people feel very lonely and i don't think it's just because of like romantic relationships when i was younger i felt like i had to be in a romantic relationship to feel beautiful, valuable, pretty, just anything. But I also think this loneliness epidemic stems also to friendships because like I was saying, with it being the holidays, I think as amazing the holidays are and celebrating and stuff like that, it can also evoke feelings of envy and jealousy and just all these negative emotions and comparing yourself because if you're not in a romantic relationship and you also don't have that type of friend group where you celebrate these things and you dress up and you kind of make a big deal about things that you're gonna feel left out, uncared for, and then kind of start spiraling. And I will say there is a huge difference of being alone versus being lonely because I am an introvert so I am alone a lot of the times and I don't feel bad about being alone but it's very rare that I feel loneliness. I feel it sometimes but it's very rare because I actually like being alone and I enjoy my alone time because it's very freeing but I do notice that when I start to feel lonely I am someone who likes to talk and share ideas so when I don't have like that kind of interaction where I'm learning something new from someone or like sharing what I know and it's like that that's when I feel like the loneliest because I do even though I'm an introvert I love to talk I like talking about random things i do not like surf <laughs> i do not like service level conversations i like i like weird conversations i like when people tell me about their interest and why are they interested in that thing i like 
when they talk about a song and the reason why they connect so deeply to a song. I like when people just have unique things about them and a story behind them. I'm not a fan of talking about like things like going on in media or stuff that's like irrelevant to the person. And I think that's why sometimes I tend to be... And that's why sometimes I tend to get very drained by people because a lot of times what's relatable in a conversation is just not what I enjoy talking about. I like people talking about their goals, ambitions, dreams, interests, just like what makes them them. And if I feel like that's not happening, I just get drained by the company. Not good at talking about things like even romantic relationships is a hard conversation for me because there is very few people that like I'll let people know my opinion on romantic relationships meaning like what I think I look for in a person but I don't like talking about my personal relationships but I like talking about it in a general sense in a general idea so if that's not a thing and the conversation is boys and hookups like that's just not my thing I don't really believe in hookup culture either, so people can do them, but that's just not my thing. That's why I feel like I'm the most comfortable being alone because I think you can be around people but still feel lonely. So I would rather be my by myself and feel freely myself than feel lonely among people because I feel like that loneliness hurts more than being by yourself and lonely. And I also came up with a list of why people feel lonely. One reason why people feel lonely is because of poor self-image. The reason why people feel lonely is because being with themselves makes them feel uncomfortable. And I think that kind of happens when you're kind of living in a, you've been, experienced something traumatic or you experience like a lot of judgment. So then you start to feel insecure. And this type of loneliness is kind of disheartening because it really has nothing to do with you. It just that you get so afraid to be in your own thoughts because you're uncomfortable with yourself. The second type of loneliness I said stems from comparison. This is what I was kind of talking about earlier when I said like a time of year evokes a certain feeling, like usually holidays. Kind of like when it's similar like to like Christmas and you know like if you don't have a lot of family and you see like all those holiday things with families being happy and jolly together, it evokes an emotion. So it's kind of a similar thing where you're comparing yourself to the images you see whether it's just like on social media or advertisement or anything like that just something that evokes the message that you should be around people and if you're not you feel kind of like what is wrong with me this type of loneliness compared to the first one where it's from poor self-image this one is kind of like a temporary feeling like you don't feel this loneliness for too long it's just because of the things happening in that season but I feel like with the first type of reason why people feel lonely that is something that's more everlasting until you work through those insecurities the third reason why people feel lonely is because their thoughts and beliefs where they associate being alone with being unlikable and the fourth one, I just called it the introvert problem because this is something I feel like I face as an introvert. Sometimes I want closeness with a person, but I also feel drained when I do get close to people. Like I don't have the capacity to have people around. I feel like that one is a hard issue because especially with so much people saying like, yeah, you're supposed to want to be around people. You're supposed to be social. 
it's a human to want to socialize with everyone. But I feel like as an introvert, I feel differently because it's not that I don't want to social with people, but it's the capacity of what is normal way, what is a normal way to socialize is the reason why I feel like I can't. I talked about this a bit earlier because I was just kind of ranting, but I don't like how because of technology that there is kind of like this expectation from people to always be available and this kind of stems from at one point on my for you page it was like joking about people who have their phone on do not disturb my ringer is always off i don't even think i use do not disturb that often but they were saying like what are you doing that you're so busy that you have your phone on do not disturb and I just feel like that's a weird thought process to have, in my opinion. I don't think necessarily, because I do get both sides. I get that people want someone there for them and acknowledge, but to always want people there for you on your time, I feel like is a bit unfair. With the way at least I function, I do things in time periods. So I don't like being on my phone it's not fun i don't like ha having it next to me honestly i'm on my ipad and my laptop more than my phone the only reason i was on my phone more before a few months ago is because i was in school but i'm just saying like that urgency that people expect is why it's kind of hard to be close to people because if you have that expectation and I'm someone who believes in like slow living and that and believes that life should not be as urgent because I think that's why people are overly exposed to stress because of that demand and expectation. I think it triggers our nervous systems to make us go into fight or flight or freeze mode constantly and this goes for friendships but it also goes for like the jobs out there it goes for just the way society is functioning and i don't think us as humans were meant to function that way also look how cute these socks are i'm just like in a pink era so cute anyways but with each one of those I feel like they have a solution so for the first one with poor self-image it really that that one just calls for you to go on a healing era like to kind of get comfortable with being uncomfortable and spend time with yourself because if you're unable to be alone with yourself i think there's something that caused it there whether it's people made you feel like you are so wrong as a human being which i personally experienced and when i was younger that's something i struggled with Where's the other piece I got? Anyways, I was saying that is what I struggled with. So I had to heal because I remember, okay. So it's pretty obvious I'm a, a little more nerdy. I'm a little more soft-spoken than most people. And my hobbies literally include writing. It includes, well, I wanted to include like puzzles, but I also really like puzzle games. I like reading, I like drawing and sketching, like all of my hobbies are very like introverted in a way. I remember someone calling me boring because of my hobbies, essentially. I'm very confused right now. So it takes one, it takes two. Because I felt boring, I felt like I had to make it up and I couldn't be with myself because 
being by myself would be boring. Being by myself would mean being with someone boring. Being with someone uninteresting. So I always struggle to just be with myself because I thought I was supposed to want and be around people and people would make me interesting. I think I was talking about how I felt about myself. So when you have a negative connotation with yourself, that's why it's hard to be with yourself. And that's why I did, well, it's gonna be put up after this, about how to not be your worst enemy because it's, I wanted that one to focus essentially on this area because if you are going to be on a self-love journey this is an essential part to not be your worst enemy. It's supposed to be another piece like this, but... Okay. We found her. Okay. Boom. And on to the second one. I just want to start off by saying, like, feelings of, like, jealousy and envy are human. We all experience at least... We all experience it at least once in our lives, but the important part is to understand that when you do have those experiences, it basically tells you what you desire, but sometimes what you desire could be misleading. Because sometimes you have to pause and ask, do I really want this thing or am I being influenced to want that thing? I'm gonna be so real with you that when I was younger, I literally s skipped school on Valentine's Day because I was so sad about not having a Valentine. It was because a lot of times I was comparing myself I was comparing myself to people in my grade who received like anonymous flowers. I was comparing myself to what I saw on social media. And me being the person I was, I was a very much certified lover girl. So I felt that intensely because I felt like no one was interested in me. And I felt unwanted, unlikable and all these negative feelings. That's why it's kind of misleading when you have like those desires because it wasn't so much because once I did experience those things, like being in a romantic relationship, I realized how much I needed to grow and the relationship did help me realize that I needed to kind of rely on my own validation because I always thought before having one that the relationship would make me happy. It would make me like myself more. And the truth is I still hated myself so much during my first relationship, which is why even if you think you want something, it could be misleading and not the right time for you. Just like, I don't even think right now I would be in the headspace to have a, the type of friends I would desire. Because this is going to be a whole thing for next week. But what I will say is I did think about like the type of friends I want. But then I also think about if I have the capacity to be around those friends because the type of friends I want are people who are very confident, ambitious, and kind. But I also think for me to have those friends, I need to still grow a bit more because I do think I'm kind. I do think I'm ambitious, but I do struggle with confidence at times. I am much more confident than I was, especially even a few months ago, but confidence and developing confidence is not a linear thing. But I did realize the thing that makes me feel the most confident is 
putting effort in myself and making an effort to be the best version of myself even if I don't get the exact results that I want to. And this is important because I don't think confidence is just something that magically appears. It takes time to develop, 100%. But I always think about like, how does it develop? Like, And I think it's a case by case for a person. Becoming confident is accepting where you're at but putting in the effort because you know where you want to be. And liking yourself, loving yourself through the process. And I think that's very important. Wait, where was I going with this? <laughs> Sorry. See, I get very, oh, I remember my point. I remember. Comparison is what will trigger those negative emotions and a lot of times you don't really want that and my point is if you're seeing pictures of like the galentine's day dinners or romantic dates or how people ask their significant other to be their valentine just know that even if let's say those are the type of things you do desire right maybe there are things that need to happen first. Things happen when they're meant to. And I think things will develop the way they're meant to. Because you'll find those friends when you start practicing being more celebratory, you know, and being extra and like being the way you want to be. And I think Sometimes we don't find those people right away. We don't find that relationship. What we don't find that relationship right away is because we got to do some internal work. And that's okay. It's okay to be where you're at because as long as you put in the effort and want to try, I think everyone will get to where they want to go. Third thing, like I said, is your thoughts, especially associating with being alone as being unlikable. So this one, I used to even sit by myself. Reframing your thinking about being alone is very important in this concept. Because if you're struggling to be alone because you find it like, oh, it means I'm unlikable and that's what you're associating with. You just need to reframe your thinking on what it looks like to be alone. Because I do think that happens because our perspective when we see other people alone. You know, like we kind of judge it. Well, not we, but like, and sometimes you kind of judge it. You kind of like, associate something with it like if you see someone like in a cafe sitting by themselves like eating food like do you sit there and wonder like oh do they have any friends that they're gonna meet or like and or does it like cross your mind like oh they can actually enjoy being in that space by themselves and they are comfortable with themselves they're comfortable taking up space by themselves because if you start thinking about being alone that way, that the person is confident enough to do that, that being alone is a sign of confidence, it's a sign of self-assurance, is a sign of maturity, then when you try to be alone, it will stop feeling like a negative connotation to it. It would start feeling like, okay, I can, this is, I want to be mature. I want to be self-assured. So I'm going to spend time alone. And that's the way you have to like reframe your thinking in order to be able to do it. And it does take a while to 
trick your brain and develop a new mindset. Once you start practicing seeing it differently, being alone will be so much more comfortable. And I did kind of over explain the introvert part. And I don't really have advice for it because it is something I still struggle with. But I think once again, this kind of connects to the second one where I said like people will come around when they're meant to. And I believe it's the same with this one. Like someday I'll find people that don't make me feel drained, that it's a mutual exchange of energy so I never feel tired from them, that our conversations make me feel lit up and motivated and just amazed and inspired. And I'll meet people who value slow living as much as I do, that values scheduling time with each other and checking in with each other. Because let me tell you something very cute, and this is another reason why I feel like I struggle with this concept of friendship. Because yes, a person should, you know, not be obligated to another person's time. But yesterday, I was just like chilling with my mom. She was just in her space, I was in mine. And my godmother called her and she was like, and my mom always puts her, her phone on speaker. And my, mo and my godmother just goes like, hey, I'm just calling to check in on you. How are you feeling? How are you doing? And it's like, I love that, you know? I loved how she called just to check in, you know? Because I feel like nowadays we don't do that. The reason why people feel like things are so urgent because they feel like what they have to say to you is very urgent. Like they don't even check in. Like, are you okay? Like, are you mentally and emotionally doing okay? And I feel like I need that those type of friends that understand like i hate the words i miss you because when someone tells me they miss me it's kind of like okay if you missed me you would have just texted me or something and i would eventually get back to you but if the first words you tell me is like oh i miss you but you don't make an effort to conversate with me or check in on me how am i supposed to believe that's true or i feel like if you miss me you just miss my presence and miss how i make you feel and it has nothing to do with me as a person and that's why i hate when someone tells me they miss me because on one end yes no one is obligated to your time but on the other hand, if you miss someone and you reach out to them, why not, instead of saying I miss you, like, be like, hey, I was just thinking about you. I wanted to see how you're doing. And then, yes, the phrasing does absolutely matter to me. So that's just a little rant. And I feel like if I didn't spend time alone, I would not understand that about myself that I would just accept anything and everything so I feel like that's why spending time with yourself and being alone is so important because it raises your standards you know and I'm just like in all areas of your life like I feel like once you're able to be alone you won't tolerate any disrespect whether it's from a friend, a significant other, and even a workplace. Because when you got that mindset that you could be alone, and you'll, you got the mindset that you'll always figure something out, because when, you're, when you spend time alone, it's like a ritual. It's like the way you think and the way you take in all your thoughts and emotions, it's, 
it's like more than a routine it's a ritual my leg is asleep hold on ow i don't know if i like this style of video i think filming vlog style takes a very long time but i don't know if it gives more energy if it's less stiff i don't know ah audacity And I didn't even finish my rose. I don't know. But. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> Spend time by yourself. And do so. If you're doing it. And you start to feel guilt about it. I want you to reflect on that. I'm. One thing I always do. Is leave reflection and journal prompts. In the description box. So make sure you check that out so you can understand like if you are feeling lonely like what is it stemming from it is important to have time for yourself and to really hone in on your emotions because i think why it's important is because it shows you it gives you clarity without the noise i think when you're around a lot of people you get a lot of opinions, a lot of feedback, and sometimes your thoughts just become noisier than they are. Like, yes, talking to people could give you good insight, but it also depends on the person you're talking to and what are you talking to them about. I will say not all company is good company. If you are around people and they're making you feel like lonely while you're there wouldn't it just be better to be good company to yourself wouldn't it be good to just be you to the fullest degree because i do feel like we all have masks you know and i think when we're by ourselves that is the version of us that is the most authentic that is like us you know and the things we do when we're by ourselves is that so even though i did not finish my legos <laughs> i don't want to spend too much time i know i'm going to have a lot of footage to edit but yeah i hope you liked the beginning and obviously i had to do a quick fit check But, obviously have a good day, evening, or night, wherever you're watching this. I hope you felt a little less lonely once you understand the, your feelings. And I want you to know that you're not alone when you feel alone. It's okay to feel lonely sometimes. It's human and... We are in an epidemic when it comes to it. So my thing is about to cut off, so.